Today we have Zenny uh, Triu, and uh, she's here to uh, talk a little bit about her own acting career and some of her accomplishments and some marketing strategies that she uses. So uh, Zenny, welcome. Thanks so much for taking some time to chat with us. Uh, I'd like to just have you give us a little bit of background on yourself. Uh, like how did you get into acting and what would you say are one or two of your biggest accomplishments that you're most proud of to date? Okay, awesome. Well, first off, thanks for having me. I'm so humble. Um, so I grew up in northern New Jersey in the suburbs, like, to see the Empire State Building from my bedroom window, just really close to the city, and I got accepted into a vocational high school, so at the end of my freshman year, it's like 2010, we had to, like, declare a major, and I had no idea what I wanted my major to be, because I was, like, 15, so I just remember seeing, like, the performance ensemble slash acting major final end of the year performance and I was like oh like I want to do that and then I did um so I declared my major at the end of my freshman year just having like really no acting experience it was great I used the monologue from Cinderella story where Hillary Duff is like telling off Chad Michael Murray like waiting for you like waiting for rain to drought and it was great three years of just so much fun and really great friendships and then when it came time to apply for um, college, obviously I was like, well, now I only want to go to school for acting. So then I did. I got into NYU Tisch. Um, I don't know if you know a lot of people who go to Tisch, but their studio system is very specific. So you spend the first two years in one studio called your primary studio. Um, and each studio is differentiated by like acting technique. Um, it's really just based off of your initial audition to get into the program. And then after that, you decide if you want to go um, to a different studio for your secondary training or if you want to stay in your studio. So my first two years was spent in the Meisner studio, which for literally anyone who's ever been to acting school, Meisner is kind of like default acting technique, um, which is what I also happened to study during high school. So... You know, I had six years of Meisner training, and then by 2015, going into my junior year, I transferred to the film and TV studio, which, in addition to helping you with camera work, commercials, auditioning, there were a lot of classes about the business part of the industry, which I found to be so, so helpful, and it was taught by casting directors, previous managers, previous agents. Um, and yeah, so I graduated two years ago in 2017, got really lucky. I say this because I know this is like maybe not normal or maybe it is, and <laughs> I just don't know it, but I got signed to my current agent right after I graduated. So I've been with the same agency for on-camera commercials for two years now, and it's just been like a really great time. I know everything I say sounds so corny and like a fairy tale, but <laughs> I had no idea growing up that I was going to be an actor. Like I thought it was going to be like a dancer or a journalist, which to be honest with you, like, I'm actually also writing and, you know, performing with dance. Like tonight I'm literally performing at Bowery Electric for dance. So it's like all those dreams are still coming true, but I feel like acting is really the solid ground I needed for performing arts training and also just how to be like a vulnerable human in my normal day-to-day -day life. Like acting school really just takes away all the pretense of social interaction. I mean, ideally. And then it really helps you get to the heart of things, makes you empathetic when you read stories in the newspaper or when you're seeing a live performance. So that's where I'm at right now. So I just turned 24, so, you know, if I was, like, a dancer, that would be old, sadly, but um, I think I'm still pretty young, so it still kind of feels like things are just starting, but they're kind of like, you know, I was just redoing my CV, like, my regular resume for regular non-acting jobs, and I was, like, surprised by how much work I had to present and write down a hyperlink um, in just, like, the past few years. So it's been like, you know, 
really surprising and you know obviously there were a lot of people who helped me along the way um but yeah that's like not quick (laughs) that was a very specific rundown of my life (laughs) (laughs) cool no that's good i mean a lot of people who listen to interviews want to know about the background of the person and uh you know what they're doing but uh, if you had to kind of summarize your one or two biggest accomplishments, what specifically would you say that they are? And how, like, what factors do you think contributed most to you accomplishing them? Okay, fantastic. Um, well, I would say that one of the accomplishments that I like rave about is, um, oh, so I, I actually just celebrated my four year anniversary with my partner. I met him the first day of acting school, but we were friends first. So I just want to say, this is like not related to marketing, but in your personal life, it's very important, I think, to have a solid foundation of friendship before you enter a romantic relationship with someone. So, <laughs> with that being said, we were friends first, and then we got together um, like halfway through NYU. And then a year after graduation, I had a friend who went to NYU for film and TV, and I think in the film and TV undergrad program, you have three major projects, and I think they're like, you're kind of like big three that you kind of show off at the end of graduation. So for an intermediate to second film project, you have like a really personal piece about two friends, and there are a lot of feelings involved concerning the Beatles. And so Ethan my film and TV friend asked me if I wanted to um, do it, and I was like, yes. And then he was like, you know, instead of just auditioning random guys for the other part, can we just ask Evan, your boyfriend, to do it with you? And I'll obviously do a chemistry test to see if it works. And then I offered it to Evan, and he was like, yeah, let's do it. So it was so much fun to act with your partner, again, like, is like such a huge surprise. I like feel like that's only something you hear with like Warren Beatty and Annette Benning. Not to compare myself to them, but it was a really great experience. Um, that was actually my first student film where an acting teacher wasn't involved, and it was so professional. Like everyone really took care of each other. There was no gossiping or being on your phone while people were shooting. Craft services was great. I felt like everyone really cared. And they're so young, like, they were, like, freshmen and sophomores in college. Like, I felt like that was such a big thing. And just to have been, like, a part of that was, like, really um, optimistic because, you know, I had been out of college for a year. And then, like, you got, you kind of meet people who are, like, oh, yeah, I went to acting school. But they're, like, jaded now. Or, like, oh, yeah, like, I used to act, but real life got in the way. So it was nice to be around people who didn't feel that way. Like, they were still really invested in their dreams and respectful of the process. And I can actually send you that link because it's on Vimeo. Um, I'm super, super proud of the work. And also Evan and everyone in the crew, especially Ethan, did a really, really great job. Um, I'd like to basically sponsor Ethan at this point, but um, I'm really excited to have people see it because it's really such a beautiful product of fantastic teamwork. And then this is actually something that I think I'm just telling you for accountability, but um, related to acting, I actually got into a fiction writing workshop from October to December of last year. I went into it thinking I was going to write a novel, but then I was like, um, no, I'm not going to write a novel. By the way, at the end of that workshop, my teacher talked about getting headshots. And thanks to you, Martin, I already had headshots that worked really great for acting and for writing. That's so, awesome. You know, <laughs> the versatility there is, like, really evident. But um, I just thought about how I didn't want to write a novel, but I still wanted to write. So I'm actually in the process of writing a collection of plays that are modern retellings of Greek mythology. So it'll kind of be like Jason and Medea, but they're graduating, but Jason's closeted and Medea is controlling or that kind of thing. Or Persephone works at a restaurant. He comes in and basically sexually harasses her to no end. Like, I mean, I'm being very glib about it, but I had so much fun writing this. 
and I'm actually friends with someone who is a theater company creator, and her whole thing is modern mythology. So who knows, maybe at the end of the year, there might be a production coming up, but it's still very nascent, so, you know, nothing is, like, really certain yet, but I'm really proud to be talking about it because um, I had no idea I was going to get into the workshop, let alone have this idea, so I think if there's one way to, like, wrap up that story, like, be really, really open, and even as an actor, like, you don't have to just be an actor, like, you can open yourself up to, like, other things, and you can get away with that when you're an actor, because everything you do informs you about human behavior, so writing a reading opens you up to, like, you know, empathy, dancing opens you up to, like, utilizing your body and using spatial awareness, um, falling in love obviously helps with your emotional prep work, so, yeah, it's, like, really okay and encouraged, I think, to do things other than act when you want to be a professional actor. So, yeah. Sorry, I feel like I always go off on a spiel. I hope this isn't a pain to transcribe. <laughs> no, no, I'm, uh, this is, this is fine. Uh, don't worry about that. Um, so I, I like that. I mean, we talked actually a little bit about that with uh, an interview with another actor that I did recently um, who does writing and does some of his own uh, film projects outside of acting. Um, and one of the questions that I asked him was, uh, do you feel like your, your other projects help you network and move your career forward? Um, and so I'd like to also ask that to you. Um, besides like the, the fact that you're going to become a better actor by writing, which is super important because you're experiencing other things, but do you also feel like you, you meet new people and it actually can help you in other ways? always behind in some way 
And then when you actually see that threshold, like if you're very goal oriented, it might feel like not as satisfying because you've kind of like built it up in your head. So I think like, you know, the best part about writing is like the writing, like not so much like envisioning if this play is going to be on stage or if this novel is going to have a book with my name on the cover. It's just like the actual process itself. I know that's so corny, but like whenever you go to a party, it really, I just went to a mixer yesterday as like a volunteer and my manager was like, hey, like try to network with people. And I'm like, well, when you say that, do you just mean like try to have a good time and have a conversation with people? <laughs> like, you know, so mm-hmm. yeah. No. I think it's great if you want to enter an event with the assignment of, hey, let me network with people. But, you know, I would consider rewording that to be like, hey, let's just have a good time and, like, I'm feeling good. So, like, let me spread that good energy around and, like, meet people who are also feeling good. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> totally. Uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of thinking of it because a lot of people, when they think of networking and moving their career forward, they kind of think, like, like you said, it's calculated and it's, it's you know, they think like networking, oh, that's so sleazy or something. And uh, one thing that I'm a big fan of is rather than thinking, you know, let me network with people, just think, let me connect with people, you know, have conversations, right. just kind of enjoy the process because when you don't enjoy what you're doing or when you feel like it's not authentically you, then it kind of gets to this point where, you know, you wind up getting stuck. Um, And so that's a question, like, tell us about, like, do you have opinions on how important it is to authentically be yourself versus trying to do everything like that, both in terms of, you know, marketing yourself or, or moving your career forward, but also perhaps even more importantly in terms of, like, auditioning and playing characters? Right. One thing that very young people, and I still include myself in this category, so it's great to be respectful, you know, like, when an important figure comes, like, you know, you want to be respectful and just humble, but I also feel like when some people go to acting school, they are taught that you're going to try to make yourself the most impressive, you know, vessel of acting as possible to the potential casting directors and managers and agents and directors. And I think, like, no, like, that's not the only thing that's going on. Like, you do have a lot to offer. But I would also say, um, to answer your question, that you have a lot to offer more so than just your previous body of work and what you could potentially you as an actor in future projects. I think it's really important to also characterize yourself in ways that remind yourself that you're human. So maybe you're a really brilliant actor, but at the same time, you might also just be like a very, very patient person. And that's so important on set, you know? Or maybe you you know that like if there's ever if there's ever an emotional scene, you're able to just kind of like respect it but also not be like stubborn. Like, you can still crack a joke, have a good time, be flexible. Um, So I think it's really important if you want to use the term marketing. When you market yourself, like, what comes with being an actor and having your training and the roles that you want in mind and your capabilities, you're also still, like, human. So I wouldn't downplay you as a person. I would actually upplay that so that you become more well-rounded. And it shows that, you know, Yes, you're there to do a job and to like support a project, but you're also going to help everyone have a good time. You know, like if you're the kind of person who like I don't know has a lot of trivia facts like in their mind, like that is like a fantastic way to like first up a set or just be really engaging, and it'll make you more memorable. I'm like not trying to give tips to like make people be arbitrarily impressive, but like it's really great to like have a person walk into the room and just really get to know a person in like 10 seconds or less in a really effortless, authentic way. I think it really adds to how much people want to work with you if you're not afraid to really show off who you would be if you were to be on set. So, you know, walk into a room, 
know that like if you don't get the role, it's like whatever because rejection is like ninety eight percent of the business, and no one takes it personally anymore. But also like show off who you would be if you did get the role or if you did get the project. Like what kind of person would you be like during down moments or like you know what kind of person would you be online for craft services like embrace that because it'll really help people figure out like if this is a collaboration that they want to happen for this specific project and if it doesn't end up happening it's not something personal it's just kind of like oh maybe this wouldn't necessarily work uh, for this specific project and then move on and then know that because you were able to show yourself off there's like that much higher of a likelihood that person will remember you for their next project yeah, no, that's, that's awesome tips. I mean, it's so important. A lot of people think that they need to be someone other than themselves when they're going out. They want either their photo like way too retouched or, or you know, they want to yeah. hide <laughs> angles and everything. And if you're authentically you and you're playing characters and uh, doing being authentically yourself, uh, you'll get called and cast in for the best possible roles that are specifically for you. You'll work with the people who are meant to work with you and you'll do your best work, which results in referrals and more work down the line, you know, rather than being right. some fake version that's all about like promotion. I mean, you have to do certain things for promotion and stuff, but you need to also be authentically you and do what's most comfortable for you, which actually leads into my next question. Just kind of you had mentioned earlier like that you don't like social media and don't really use it. And some actors believe that even if they don't like it, they have to use it um, to promote themselves. And, you know, this whole conversation so far is about being authentically you and doing what you're comfortable with. So what would you say to people who think that they have to use social media? You know, how do you get by without it? Oh, okay. Well, this is so funny because I remember during my writing workshop, sorry, I'm also... I'm also going to hyperlink the writing workshop, but I'm not, no one's paying me to talk about this workshop. I'm just genuinely excited to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's but, um, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. During, um, well, during one class, the class is all about promotion and furthering your career, my teacher said that, you know, some people in the writing and publishing industry really believe that if you don't use Twitter, you're basically non-existent. And I have just straight up never had a Twitter account since I was like a freshman in high school. I was just a totally different person in high school. Um, but I was like, oh, well, I don't want to download Twitter. Um, and then, like, I was already on Facebook and Instagram. If you're a visual artist, like a sculptor or a painter, Instagram is like also the equivalent of that. So, you know, I like thought about it and I was like, oh, do I want to re download social media? But I thought about why it makes me uncomfortable and everyone has like a set of ethics and literally like 90 percent of my friends are on facebook and instagram and like i still love them very much so it's like it's not all about like everyone has to like be like me but just personally for me i just um am really anti-corporation so i just hate facebook and which owns instagram and whatsapp i don't like how they're very unhealthy capitalistic tendencies. I also don't like how social media for me feels like a cop out from my authentic self. So I remember like when I was like writing essays, something I enjoyed doing because um, I'm a nerd. When I was writing essays and I had Facebook in the background, it was just so easy for me to check myself out of the creative process. Um, maybe it's because I have a self control issue, but maybe because it was so normalized for people to just be scrolling through their phone like while they're at dinner like with a potential client or when they're with their significant other and they're still like on their news feed. I just feel like it was really distracting but also it took away time for me to just like be by myself or really be with other people to process my emotions so important when you're doing emotional work for character or just figuring out for myself what I wanted my life at that point to look like and you know I think that if you think it's really necessary like no one is really going to convince you otherwise so whatever instinct you have just go with it like if you hate social media but you think it's like a necessary evil then like you know don't shame yourself like don't hate yourself like do it because you feel like it's like a necessary part of 
your life. But if you feel like you can relinquish it, like there's more than one way to roam. And I don't know if I want to hold myself up as like a pillar of that successful example or anything. But I think like, you know, some people literally don't eat meat and they get their, you know, protein from other sources. Spoiler alert, I am one of those people. I gave up meat for less and then I gave it up forever. You can do it. Like, you can give up something that you thought was, like, necessary. I used to eat burgers, like, all the fucking time. And now it's just, like, actually, like, it's possible to just let go of something that you thought was so important before. And I think really, like, like how, you know, now I really have to, like, buy protein in other ways. Then if that's the case, like, figure out how to connect with other people in a different way. If you don't like social media because you don't like how everything is digital, then, like, you know, take yourself out to, like, parties and functions, especially if you're already socially inclined to do that, but just, like, do more of it. You know, like, if you're the kind of person who, like, really likes to, like, advertise, like, with a status update, then, like, text all your friends. Like, your friends are your friends for a reason. Like, I personally love individually texting people with updates of my life and what my projects are as opposed to sending it out into the ether and having someone I met once four years ago see that. It feels weird to me that someone like that would know what's going on in my life. But for people who do update their status, update what have you, it works for them. And I think there's more than one way to be successful too. By the way, also just don't compare yourself to other people because success is always, always idiosyncratic. And, like, you will really shoot yourself in the foot if you start to play that game where you're like, oh, well, this person has more followers. Like, this person has this sponsorship on YouTube. It's like, but, you know, like, do you want to be Instagram famous or do you want to be a beauty blogger? If the answer is no, there's no reason why you have to compare yourself to your own person and your standards of are completely your own so yeah like for my friend who is literally a beauty blogger getting a sponsorship from urban decay might be her threshold of success whereas for me i feel like my threshold of success would be like um you know something completely different not related to youtube or beauty products at all and that's so 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 fine um so just releasing yourself from like standard expectations and setting up your own expectations of what success looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's excellent. Uh, Awesome, awesome tips. I mean, when you think about it, people are successful in all different areas. There's people who are really successful who don't have social media pages. I have social media pages, but I don't actually use them very much. My method of how I like to communicate is usually through email and blogging. Other people don't like anything to do with the internet and just want to network all the time. So if you figure out what you most enjoy doing, then you're being authentically you and you'll also be able to continue following through, you know, some people who don't like Twitter and try posting for like two months usually give up after that time period and then they just kind of stop. So you got to find what you most enjoy doing and you can be, you know, you can move your career forward that way. Right. And I actually really like that. I think it's important to literally test out what you suspect could be useful. So like, obviously before I went off social media for good, I tested it out. Like I would try to like not touch it for like a week and like, you know, then I ended up finding out that that week was really awesome, so I prolonged it, and now it's, like, for everything. Or, you know, like, I think, like, you should always test out things that you feel like could or could be useful. So, like, maybe you've always been abstaining from social media, but you find that Twitter is really, really funny, and you're like, wait, I don't like social media except Twitter, then, like, go for it. And, like, embrace the fact that, like, you're a person who's capable of change. Like, who you are today is hopefully not going to be the person you are tomorrow because you're constantly evolving and changing. So, you know, if you call me again for another interview in like six months, who knows like how I would be different. I mean, I think I would still probably be off social media and not be eating meat, but you know, maybe, maybe my views on acting have changed. Maybe I don't want to be an actor anymore. Maybe I just want to be a writer full time. Like, it's okay to embrace for yourself that, like, sometimes what you think will happen 
won't, but that's not a bad thing or a deceit. It's okay to, like, be open to, like, the mysteries of your career and your life. Um, so I think just, like, keeping yourself open to, like, change and possibility is the only way you're going to have a career that you are proud of, um, rather than trying to, like, anticipate your next move your next goal like it's exhausting and wrinkles will show so don't do that to yourself <laughs> um excellent uh all right my next question is uh are there certain things that you tend to do on a daily or weekly basis to get paid acting work and uh tell us a bit about them and how they've contributed to you know helping you get those paid jobs and moving your career forward Okay, so my answer is no, I don't do that. I am super disciplined in a lot of other ways, but for me, I feel like I am very committed to acting and therefore to give it the respect it deserves. I actually don't make it my um, money maker. I actually do not depend on it for money because, I mean, honestly, if you start to depend on something or someone for money, your relationship it starts to get a little fucked up. So for me, I feel like it's super important to have a day job. When I met with my manager, I mean, sorry, my agent a few months ago, um, he just like was like, oh, but you have a day job that you like, right? And I was like, yes. And he was like, good, keep it. So luckily for me, uh, my day jobs are directly related to the arts, so I'm not jaded and burnt out. However, I also have a lot of experience in the service industry and for some people, it's great because you constantly improvise or interact with other people. For me, I work with arts and education nonprofits, so I'm teaching acting and dance and poetry. And it's really great um, to be with those companies. If you want, I can hyperlink their pages too because maybe they're looking for employees and nonprofits pay really well in New York. But um, with that being said, that gives me the freedom to just not worry about acting because you can't, like what I was saying before, you can't anticipate the amount of work that will be available. Like the summer is usually slow because people are not shooting as much in the industry and the union. But a lot of people could be doing student films because they're freshly graduated and they're really excited. So there's no way to really anticipate what every week is going to look like. After excess, like you could refresh it today and then like tomorrow it could look super, super different. I think as long as you don't make it your main source of income, you're open to the flexibility of like, okay, this week is pretty slow for auditions. Next week, you're auditioning like back to back to back. Like, then that's super fine. And like, if it is really quiet for a few days or even a few weeks, like, that's fine. Like, <laughs> because you're trapped in the long-term longevity of your career. I would never, ever base off my entire career off of just like, a short period of a few days or a few weeks. So my tip for that would be, one, trust in yourself. So if you just have like a really slow season for acting, the next time you get an audition, like who cares? No one's going to know you had a slow season unless you tell them. And like, it's not a big deal because like you're going to be acting for like years or even decades. Like this slow period will be like so small and fractional compared to the big picture. Um, second, accept roles that are very random. So the one that I booked for tonight, I happened to meet this guy last summer, and I did a show with him. And then I didn't hear from him for, like, 10 months, and randomly he was like, oh, I have another show, and I thought of you. And I was like, awesome. And that's just, like, another example of being surprised. Like, I literally have not thought of him since then, not because he's forgettable, but because, you know, we worked together once and it was a good time and that was kind of it. But now it's kind of like, oh, like the least expected person to come out and offer something to me just did and 100% I'm going to say yes. And other things like, you know, keep yourself healthy. Um, make sure you take care of yourself because you... It's okay if it happens, but if mentally or physically you're not in a great place, but you are getting a lot of auditions or offers, like, you know, I would never recommend someone push themselves past their limits just to accept that work. People are really understanding, so 
you know, no professional person is going to take it personally. If you really just cannot accept a role, trust that your career is going to be long and just say no. Like, you have the power to not say yes to everything that comes your way and burn yourself out. Like, you can burn yourself out as an actor. So, in order to make sure your career is healthier and longer, then I would say try not to just focus on, like, the very quick pleasures of just, like, short-term stuff. Yeah, no, that's I I think that that is awesome advice. Um, a lot of actors have it in their mind, and pretty much anybody, if they run their own business or they freelance, they have it in their mind that if they have another source of income uh, besides what's coming from their goal, you know, like their acting career or whatever, that means that they're like failing or something. But that's not necessarily the case because the problem is, is if you're needy like money is a very real thing and if you're extremely like in need of money you'll come across as needy and you'll look desperate in your auditions and you know you'll take on like you said uh projects or your work work with people who aren't best suited for you and that means that you're not being authentic and true to who you are which right. means you're going to do worse work you're going to be seen as like somebody who's kind of desperate and it's going to keep you in that sort of like situation where you're you're hungry and you're needing more work and it's kind of like a vicious right. downward cycle as soon as you can kind of free yourself from that you become much less stressed and you actually do better in your auditions and things just start happening you wind up finding an agent or finding something that could be really helpful and so it's definitely not a failure if you have an outside income um, until that point comes where, you, you know, maybe you're so in demand that everything is back to back and you want to quit that job to have more free time. But there's no right. rush. And yes, exactly. There is no rush. And I just want to add two things to that. One, um, I think for the most part, people, like their only job in life is just like enjoy the very short amount of time we have on this earth and like great that like if you like acting you want to make a career out of it but if you find yourself accepting acting roles that make you extremely unhappy then like don't like you you're never defined by like one acting job you know but on the second I would say that um this is like maybe really messed up but to be honest with you when I act or write I literally never think about money. But I'm not saying that because I'm I'm like super rich or anything <laughs> like that. Like I don't I don't live paycheck to paycheck, but like I figured out a way to like, you know, have a day job where I actually really like my coworkers and I love what I do. Like, um, I love working with kids. It is so humanizing and humbling because, you know, kids are just better than us. But um <laughs> it's so it's so great. Like I fucking love my job would like shout it from the rooftops and that gives me the freedom to just not think about a quantifiable amount of money when I'm auditioning when I'm submitting myself for something and then when you do get paid it's like all the more pleasurable because it's like what I have been like alluding to for this whole conversation just like the unexpected surprises that life throws your way and also I say this because I know how privileged this can come off, but especially when you're young, um, I would be so okay with not accepting money for every acting or writing or dance job that you do because, one, it makes you more disciplined in finding a day job that you'll like because everyone, I feel like when they're fresh, they're like, oh, I don't need a day job. And I'm like, dude, Working hard actually feels really, really good. Like, whether you're bartending or you're teaching or you're in carpentry, working hard makes you feel really fucking good. So, you know, you can work hard when you're acting too, but when you act too much, it, it kind of becomes like, oh my God, I've been writing so much, I just have nothing to produce anymore. So it's really good to get that balance with the day job and your creative life. But also, like, a lot of my favorite projects, like, I never got paid for it. Um, it was a favor, as, like, my example with Ethan. Or I didn't get paid, like, a lot of money. But I got paid in non-monetary ways. So, you know, there's different forms of capital. Economic capital is easy because it's money. 
social capital is like the friendships that you make, um, aka your network, if you want to think of it like that, for future projects. Um, there's cultural capital where you learn about something that you probably never would have encountered otherwise. And then there's also just, you know, all the fun parts of just, you know, being on set, getting fed, um, having a character you really, really like, having something for your reel. There's more than one way to get paid is what I'm trying to tell you. And it doesn't have to be in a dollar amount. But I know that for some people, the dollar amount is really, really important. So I would try to like work really hard to make a life for yourself that you're proud of where you are healthy, like you're eating and able to pay rent and just relinquish yourself from the stress of like considering every acting job as like a job. It's more about the acting and the job component is like secondary. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, totally. Um, I, uh, now I'd like to ask you just in terms of auditioning, um, do you have, uh, one, two, maybe three top tips that you can give to an actor who struggles to get called back after auditioning? Okay. This is going to sound literally like I'm the worst person ever, but I actually really love auditioning. Like, <laughs> I don't know how it is because like I have like, you know, I literally have like depression and anxiety, but I have no anxiety when it comes to auditioning. Um, I really like myself. I like cannot wait to meet other people and like show myself off and just have like conversations. I think just if you do get nervous, that's like so normal and I know what I'm saying is totally abnormal. But just know that like, you know, if you got an audition, you already did like you already made it, you know. They called you in for an audition. They were like, here's your time slot, come on in. Like, dude, they want you. They like you. They're interested in you. You're you're already kind of like past like a certain threshold. Like, you got it, you know? <laughs> um, second is that I never, <laughs> sorry, similar to how I don't think about the money, I also don't think about the callback because it's not so that I can like set myself up for like positive surprise only, but it's like, the audition is the event itself. Like, if there's equal to it with a callback and then a subsequent job, great. But the audition is, like, the fun part. Like, meeting someone who has cool ideas to offer. Like, dressing up in an outfit that you look super hot in or, like, really great for a character. Like, maybe you don't get to, like, dress in an outfit like that every day or, like, you know, just showing off, like, your acting chops and having a great time. The audition is the event itself. It's not a precursor to anything. It's, like, it's not the appetizer. It's the entree. And, yeah. And then if you get a call back, you're like, oh, shit, I get to do it all over again, but in a different way with slightly more confidence. That's super great. Um, and then lastly, I would just say that I... Um, don't really get self-conscious when I'm not auditioning a lot because of that trust in like, if I haven't auditioned for a while or if I've kind of taken a mini break from acting to focus on my day job or to focus on my mental health or to focus on my relationships with people, that's not a defeat. That's not like I'm giving up on my acting dream. It's more of like I have to take care of myself as a human being before I can get back into acting. So it's okay to like, not audition all the time and then you'll get better you'll feel more confident about other areas of your life and then you'll audition all the time so it's just the like ebb and flow of like your career to like really embrace that you don't have to be auditioning all the time all year round to be a proud confident successful actor it really is more of like the attitude that you have in your life like god forbid you don't do anything acting related for 10 years and then you get an audition. Like, you should still have that confidence that you had 10 years prior, you know? Um, because inherently, you know, like, I'm always going to be an actor. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question? I know it sounds a little bit hokey or like I'm a self help book. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's definitely I mean, your perspectives on things are really great. It's it's really in your perspective, if I kinda had to summarize it, 
Uh, I would say that you are all about the enjoyment of acting and doing it for the love of it rather than trying to make it into some methodical process that kind of gets you stuck. Here, you just kind of move forward naturally and enjoy the process, which is amazing. Um, right. So yeah. And I just want to point out really quickly, because giving a quick shout out to my parents. So I um, am daughter of two parents who didn't get past um, high school, and they actually are both immigrants. Um, so for, for them, like, one, me going to college was expected, but going to acting school was, like, not expected. But, like, they've been supportive, and, you know, the only times they were not supportive was when I was getting so stressed um, in, like, a non-healthy way. And... You know, I just remember my mom once saying, like, listen, like, if you don't like acting, like, just do something else. Like, I only want you to do something if you like it. And also, like, it's okay to admit, maybe down the line or during a temporary break, maybe you just don't like acting that much and you want to focus on other things. But, like, I really think that, like, people enslave themselves to things that maybe they decided was right a while ago, but it's no longer true. But, um, you know, if, if you like it, then, like, keep doing it. And if you don't, like, just take a break from it and, like, come back when you like it even more. I just, I agree with you. I really am about the enjoyment of whatever you do in your life. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my next question, uh, I, I could kind of guess maybe based on our conversation, what your answer might be. But uh, a lot of actors, you know, have it in their mind that they need to get an agent. Uh, and, you know, you said that you got your agent essentially like out of luck, um, partially. But I was just wondering, do you have any advice or what would you say to an actor who's like, I need to get an agent? Um, do you have a strategy for them to get an agent? Or would you suggest that, you know, it'll come naturally? What's your thoughts? Um, I want to first introduce an example of my friend who is literally a refugee from Russia. So she's here on political asylum. And she literally books, like, a lot. But she has never had a manager or an agent. She just works her fucking ass off. She, like, is on Actors Access. She's on Casting Network. But like, she works hard. And she knows that, like, even if she never got a manager or agent, she would still work hard. And then, now I'm going to give you a big spoiler alert in the industry. Even when you get an agent or a manager, she still has to work really fucking hard. Like, during my meeting with my agent, like, here's, like, a secret that maybe I will get fired for saying, but you don't stop working hard once you get a manager or an agent, you still are working at the same piece that you are. So here's, here's the thing. If you don't like working hard, don't be an artist. Um, I still find my own audition. And a lot of the work that I've gotten hasn't been because my agent sent me out. But, I mean, I love my agent. So sometimes the work I get is because of my agent. But it's not like I relinquish the responsibility of finding work to somebody else. I'm still doing my part in vouching for myself. So honestly, does it really matter if you have an agent or a manager? I would say no, but maybe I'm spoiled and not self-aware because I've had one for a couple of years. But like, I don't know, I feel like it really is about like your work ethic. And also, should you get a manager or agent, they can tell if you're like a lazy fuck. So <laughs> you probably wouldn't want to they, they probably will not want to work with you because they they want to vouch for you and send you out and, like, get their commission. But they also don't want to, like, do all the work that, like, you should be doing. And here's the thing about confidence. When you find yourself submitting yourself, whether or not you have an agent and your manager on the sidelines to help you out, like, you will love applying or submitting the same way, like, you would love auditioning. Like, you will love to send out your resume and headshot and be like, hey, here I am. I'm super excited about this project. Hope you'll consider me for this role. Like, it'll be like a pleasure in your life. You'll like wake up in the morning and look forward to when you get to go to your laptop and submit yourself. Like, that's working hard, but not feeling like working hard is like depleting you. Like, again, like based on how much you enjoy being an 
actor, you're going to, like, love the fact that you get to live in the day and age where you can submit yourself so easily on a computer. And I think, like, that will make agents and managers like you even more because sending you out is going to be so easy for them. They're going to know and trust that every time you walk into the door and you meet someone, you're just, like, a pleasure to be around, even if it's, like, for five seconds. You know, like, they're going to trust that you're professional, that if you commit to a date or a callback or shoot, like, you're not going to bail. You know what I mean? Like, they're just going to trust you because, like, you trust yourself. But they're only going to do that if they sense that, like, you enjoy the work that comes with being an actor. Because being an actor is still a job, so you have to work hard. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's excellent. Um I mean, as we wrap this up, I have a final uh, sort of two-part question for you, um, which is just in general, is there any advice that you would like to give to an actor um, who sort of feels stuck or feels like, you know, their career has kind of been at the same place for a while? Um, Anything that you'd like to say to them either about what they should be doing or even what they should avoid doing? Um, do you have anything like that to finish up with? Yes. Um, don't make, don't decide how things are going to go before it's time to. Like, if I had during any point in the last few years been like, you know what, I just haven't been getting a lot of work, no one has thought of me, I'm kind of done acting, like, I probably would not have accepted the subsequent offers and projects that I got. Like, you, no one is ever forcing you to make a decision like, hey, are you still an actor or are you not? Like, it's okay to sometimes just be a person in the world. Like, sometimes, like, when people ask me, so what do you do? I tell them, like, right off the bat, oh, like, I'm blah, 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 blah. And I always say, like, I'm an actor. And that's true whether I'm performing tonight or whether or not I have an audition in, like, two months. Like, it's always true it's kind of just like a fact of your life you know like you don't have to put yourself in a timeline where you're like oh you know what it's been six months since anything's happened I guess I'm just not an actor anymore like no <laughs> like that's it's not true like you know maybe you're gonna get to a point where you really just feel like maybe you're a parent and you're like you know what I'll act if something convenient comes up but I just have a priority to like my kids And that's fine. Like, that's not a defeat. That's, like, you vouching for yourself as, like, a person. Maybe you're in grad school. Maybe you're in law school. And, like, right now, you really want to be a law school student. And then acting will be on the back burner. That's so fine, too. Like, there's nothing better than meeting an actor who's just confident in him or herself as, like, a human being. Because, you're right, it comes off as less desperate when a project is on the table. But... It also just makes you fun to be around and like people want to only work with people where it's fun to be around and like you know even if like you're like a total diva and you produce like the best work ever like people are still going to call you a diva behind your back so just like (laughs) don't be don't be horrible to work with and like you are more than just an actor too like you're a daughter or son you're a sibling you're a lover you're a student you code in your free time like I would not be afraid to embrace that when you meet people in an acting related context because that's so cool and like yeah it shows that you really value and enjoy your time on planet earth and like that is just like fantastic energy to be around and also it is such a myth I think especially before graduate from college like everyone is always going to be stuck in some capacity. Sometimes you'll have a moment or even a whole day where you're just like, you know what, everything right now is like so fine and so great. But for the most part, everyone is always, always, always working to improve themselves in some way. So maybe they're booking a lot, but you know, maybe they just feel tired all the time and they haven't been hanging out with their friends a lot. Or maybe like they've been super social and having the time of their lives, but they haven't been booking a lot. Like no person has it all figured out. Like, everyone's always working on themselves in some way. So, I don't know. I hope that these people feel like the playing field is, like, leveled out. But, like, you know, like, I 
I have friends who've been in like Kodak commercials, Netflix TV series, whatever, whatever. But like, you know, it. I'm still super proud to like be me. And every time your friends book something, because you like yourself so much, it gives you the freedom to like celebrate other people and their accomplishments. You know, so. I would hope you would want that for yourself too. Like when you book, your friends aren't like bitter and jealous. You want them to like celebrate you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to like yourself as a person so that you can like yourself as an actor and like other actors and like other people. Um, So like it's so fine to be stuck. And sometimes feeling stuck is in a really great place that you can just sit back and just process like, you know, what do you want? Like, what makes you feel good, happy right now, and what does it? Like, feeling stuck is a great opportunity to reconfigure. So I wouldn't be afraid of it when it happens because it's always going to end up happening, like, as time and time goes on. That's just super normal. Um, it's not a negative thing to be stuck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, I think that uh, that you're... <laughs> Your uh, interview that we just went through, everything that you said, uh, I love it. I mean, it's it's really eye opening to to hear you know this type of perspective on really you know it's it's process oriented rather than results specific results, and that's super important. Um, I mean, obviously, we both agree that you kind of have to have a mixture of both, but most people forget about the process side and to kind of reconnect. Right with that through this interview here and understand that, you know, if you're not happy, then people won't be happy to be around you. And it's going to be way harder for you to move forward in your career. You know, I mean, all of that, it's, it all kind of works together. So, um, Oh, I also just want to give a quick caveat. I don't want people to think like you have to constantly be bubbly and like hyper, like that's (laughs) not what happiness is. I think like, if you're just feeling sad or down, like, that's okay, too. Like, you can you can work, like, even when you're not feeling, like, 100%. I think it's just really important, though, to, like, have some sort of underlying pride in yourself, even if, like, maybe you're going through something. Like, you can always work on an acting project, even if you're going through something or you're just feeling physically burnt out. Like, you don't have to be hyper and enthusiastic like all the time no because then then you're you're fake and people can kind of sense that you know um all right. Well, uh, this was amazing. You know, I want to I want to thank you on behalf of uh, myself and the people who listen to this interview. Um, everyone, I'm sure, is going to get a lot of really, really great insights. So, um, you know, thank you so much. This is amazing. Oh, thank you for asking me and for even thinking of me. It was such a 